across the world on the 25th of September every year we have come to celebrate these people and so today on health now we have a pharmacist here with us in the studio who's going to talk to us a little bit more in depth about the work that a pharmacist does and just how important it is that you listen to what your pharmacist tells you when you visit the hospital. Uh, joining us in the studio for this conversation is pharmacist Fasoya Monserrat. She is a she's the assistant director of pharmaceutical services at the General Hospital Ifako Jaye. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon on Health Now, pharmacist Monserrat. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thanks for having me here this afternoon. Yeah, uh, happy to have you with us. Uh, so let's get started. Um, how I, I know I just sort of described the pharmacists, but you know that's for us as journalists, as you, you know, as a pharmacist. How do people in your field refer? To, you know, think of themselves. How do you define yourselves? Pharmacist, we define ourselves as a health professional, a core health professional, Mm -hmm. because we are noble people. Because pharmacy is a profession that is the most accessible among all the health profession. We are the stakeholder when it comes to drug. And you know, drug is very important to everybody. And let me start by saying happy World Pharmacies Day to everyone. Like you said, it's been celebrated on the 25th September every year. So happy World Pharmacies Day. Like I said, as a pharmacist, do we just give drugs? No. It goes beyond that. Pharmacists make sure that we have right patients, right drug, right dose, right route, right time, right information and right documentation. We make sure that we don't give what belongs to A to B. You know, in the hospital setting, we have a lot of patients. So it's actually involved a lot for you to make sure that when the patient comes in, you assess the prescription. You just you don't just hand it over to them. And what we have now is patient-centered where you have direct access to your patient, one-on-one interaction. So when they come in, there is confidentiality. They are able to tell you whatever is going on with them. And don't forget, they've already seen their doctor, so they are with their prescription. So pharmacies have that access to cancel them. I'm talking about medication cancelling. Not just use this one two times daily, three times daily. No, 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 no. It goes beyond that. So during this medication counseling, you've had access to what they were using before, and that is what is called medication reconciliation. When they come in, we always advise them to bring their drug back. They have drugs in bags. We don't even want to know where they got the drug from, but we encourage them, bring your drugs when you are coming so that we'll be able to compare the patient medicine order to whatever they have, whatever they've been taking. So we'll be able to know, is there an omission in this therapy? Is there a kind of medication duplication? Is there any dosage regimen error? What do I mean? When we tell them, use this drug, 12 hourly. Maybe they were supposed to buy two packs of that, that particular drug, but at that particular time they have money for one. So funny, patients will start using it one day. And what does that lead to? It leads to therapeutic failure. But during medication cancelling, mm-hmm. we are able to find out that. So, so you, you said something earlier and I yeah. wanted to happen that, that there's, this, there's this documentation thing that happens where you you tell people to essentially bring the drugs that they've been taking before. So are you saying that anytime we treat ourselves, you know, we shouldn't throw our drug packs away, we should keep them? Because I've never been asked to bring back my old drugs at the hospital before. So it's, it's, it's new that you're saying this. Mostly it's for those people that have a disease condition like hypertension and diabetes. You know, it's a lifetime treatment. Mm. It's continuous. Oh. They have to be on drugs. Even some people 
that just have a particular ailment and they were not getting better. We would like to have an idea. What have you been on? If you are not getting better, it's better for you to bring those pack. At least let us have an idea what you've been taking. And we'll be able to, like, cancel you. This is why you are having therapeutic failure. Because the drugs we are not using rightly. Even sometimes, like I said, those people that are having hypertension or diabetes, when they bring this drug back and we check through, there can be duplication in their medication. It's because we have access to these drugs that we'll be able to know. And there can be an interaction. Two drugs can interact with one another. And can be interaction between drug and food. And what do you have when, when those things occur? Therapeutic failure. Some drugs has to be taken on empty stomach. Why some has to be taken with food? And sometimes while we are doing medication counseling, we might need to go back to the doctor. Mm. You understand? And that is why that medicat is a team. There is always a teamwork. Because we are all working together to make sure that the patient's quality of life is improved. Mm. There's this other thing that I want you to clear up, right? Especially in our society. Um, we know that we should see a pharmacist when we want drugs, right? But there is this proliferation of patent medicine dealers. We also call them chemists. How does a pharmacist, you know, differ from a patent medicine dealer and chemists? If you can help us with the distinctions. A pharmacist is far, far different. A pharmacist is a professional. They have gone to school of pharmacy for five years. And if it is PharmD, we have those people doing PharmD, doctor of pharmacy, yeah. six years. Then after that, you will do an internship of one year before going to service. They are far different from patent seller. I believe the patent seller, they undergo training and they are not licensed to sell most of this drug. What they are only licensed to sell is multivitamins, blood tonic. Hetical drugs, they are not supposed to sell it. It's only the professional that should sell ethical drugs because they are not licensed. Mm. So a pharmacist have a license, a registered license, and they are the only one that are allowed to open a pharmacy. And that's why we always do this ed talk. Mm. Even when patients come in, we, we, we talk to them. Safety. Safe medication. And we tell them the danger involved in patronizing these people. Because they don't know. Can you imagine we don't have people coming down with ulcer? They go to the, all these patent medicine, they will give them different brands of non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. When they are supposed to take just one, they will be given different one. And the other time I was talking about right those right routes. They are not professional. Mm. They wouldn't know the right way to cancel patients. And that is why can, uh, information is always being sent out that when you need drug, get your drug from a registered pharmacy. Even if you can come to the hospital, there are community pharmacy all around. Mm. They are not just there because of the cane. I've seen a community pharmacy. When a patient walks in, she was able to note that, oh, there's something wrong with this prescription. She wasn't just there to make money. She just wrote something at the back of the prescription, sent the patient back to the hospital that I need clarification on this. Do you know that? The patient actually came back to buy the drug from that pharmacy that, Mama, thank you. That was an error. And then tell me, because they are not professional, how will they actually cancel this patient on the right way to use the drug? They, they don't know. You, you know, you, you sort of alluded to it earlier, and it's a real problem. And, and thankfully, you noted that, you know, we are... 
we, we, we are, a lot of us are health poor, right? It's, it's not just even with the knowledge now. It's also like in our finances, right? And there is the belief that if I go hospital, I go spend money, right? If I go see doc, if they, if they, if they write the, if, if they write the medicine for you on top white paper, it go cost. You know, like there are these beliefs around us and. You can't blame them, you know. There have been many instances of people, you know, not being able to, like, we, I mean, we live in Nigeria. Affordable health care is, you know, it's 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 a far it's it's a far reality from from you know from the lives that many people live. So, how do we just reconcile the need for people to actually seek um, proper medical advice from a pharmacist, you know, vis-a-vis our current reality where? A lot of us are actually, you know, unable to afford health care. Well, we start by saying, it is worth. If you think that going to the hospital or to a community, registered community pharmacy is expensive, do you know that they actually spend more going to all this patent medicine? Because they kept on being unwell. The problem we still continue and they, they kept on going there. Is it not better to just go directly to the hospital to see professionals? And you know, in Lagos State, it's not everything that you actually pay for. There are some age range that some of their drugs are actually free. Mm. Yeah, especially those people running sustainable drug before being found, there is a program for them. From zero to 12, and for the elderly, at least they will get something. You understand? And even if you come to the hospital, you don't have money. You will see help. And that is why we have the social welfare. They are there. They normally give help to those people. It works? Yeah. The social welfare is in the hospital. We have some people, they don't have money, but they still come to the hospital and they get help there. Is it not better than staying at home and dying? Is it not better than going to this patent medicine cellar and damaging your organ? Because that is what happened. The condition become deteriorated. So it's better for them to seek help by going to the right place Mm. where they will get the right information and that will improve the quality of life. Do Do you even know that if you go to the hospital on time and you are able to get the right thing, the right drug with the right information on how to use your drug, hospitalization will be reduced. And it's, it's even more economical for the patients. Because I'm not feeling fine. I went to the hospital and I'm able to see the right professional. I know how to use my drug. I know what is going to affect the efficacy of this drug. I went there once and I get better. Is it not better? Mm-hmm. And I'm not even damaging any organ that will result to future problems. Indirectly, the patient is being economical. And you can see professional easily without paying a dime. Don't forget we have consultants in the hospital. We even have consultant pharmacy mm. in different fields. And that is what we are celebrating for this year. Straighten the health system. So pharmacies are there when you talk about service delivery. We make sure that we give effective, safe quality intervention to patients when needed. We make sure that they are well informed about their health. We educate them why they don't need to self-medicate. Why the young one does not need to take substances because of the danger involved. Right. You know, I wanted to talk to you about that as we wrap this up. Um, In just your years working as a pharmacist, um, what are some of the things that you reckon people can stop doing, you know, not just to help 
themselves, but we help you help them. You know, as a pharmacist, what are some of the common practices that people do that you, you want to address today? One of those things that they should stop self-medicating. They should stop treating themselves without knowing what is wrong, especially the use of painkillers, because they are actually killing themselves by using these drugs. And another thing is that whenever they are not clear about something, they should go to pharmacy. Pharmacists, we educate them. And the door is always open. Even if you have nothing to do in the hospital, you just want to get clarification on drugs, you, you can actually walk in to ask about a medication. Because I believe that when you are well informed, you will be able to know the right from wrong. And when you self-medicating, you get better. The drug interaction will be reduced. You will know that, okay, I'm not supposed to do this, I'm not supposed to do that. And you have to be taking your drug regularly, especially those people having hypertension, diabetes. They have to be on drug because it's a lifetime treatment. It's just like we eat food every day. It's compulsory. So for those people having hypertension and diabetes, is actually important. I will employ them not to stop taking their drug and to make sure that they come for their appointment regularly. And that is what we are advocating for. Right. You know, you also made mention of um, social welfare. Yeah. And I'm sure people have questions. Is it just if you don't have money? I mean, how much money do you need to not have to qualify for social welfare in the hospital? What are the things that, you know, they would assess to then say, okay, you qualify for this social welfare program and will give you drugs because you can't afford this. Can you speak a little more on that, please? I know that there are some people, maybe indigent patients, they have nobody. Who, who is an indigent patient, please? Some people that doesn't have anybody. Oh, okay. And they are sick and they are there. Are we going to say we will not treat them? No. So this is social welfare. I know that they have philanthropists, they know people. And even pharmacy give free drugs. You know when they come to the pharmacy, we assess, we cost. So when they notice that ah, these people are not getting their drug, they are the ones that will come to the pharmacy, that this patient doesn't have anybody. Or this patient, their family are not around. There are some that actually have money. But because they need to get drug as at that time, they are the one that made us to know that, okay, can you people please just give this drug now? Later, the family will come around, they will pay. So it's the work of the social welfare, not the pharmacist. Right, right. Well, look, I want to say thank you very much for helping, I, I, for helping us make sense of, you know, a pharmacist and what a pharmacist does. But just before you go, are we missing out on something? Is there something else you would like to add? Yeah. All right, let's get that clear. Yeah, I would like to say, pharmacies, we optimize therapy. We promote rational prescribing. We make sure inappropriate misuse of drug is being reduced. And at the same time, medication-related problems are prevented. And we make sure that we, pro we take part in the activity going on in the hospital to promote the life of the people. We are the key to unlock your problem about your medicine. We give the best advice when it comes to your drugs. So when you have any question about your drug, come to your pharmacist because we give the best advice on your drugs. Well, thank you very much. Um, and look, I hope that message hits somebody. This uh, has been held now. And our guest is pharmacist Fasoya Monserrat. Um, she is the assistant director of pharmaceutical services at the general, right? Yeah, assistant director of pharmaceutical services, general hospital of Fako Jai, uh, joining us on this year's occasion of World Pharmacy Day to discuss the theme pharmacy strengthening health system uh again if you have any problem whatsoever please do not self-medicate like the pharmacist has said go 
meet a pharmacist, all right? Go to the hospital and talk to them about your medication. If you've got any questions, any clarity you need or you're sick, go there, talk to them, and they will be more than willing to help you. Again, uh, Pharmacist Fashion, thank you very much for your time thank today. You. We appreciate it. And that's Health you. Now. Stay with us. Um, Global Report is up next at 3. Good afternoon.